MacBook applications. Which ones will you actually use and which ones will you download based off of an overhyped YouTube recommendation just to forget about, never use, and then end up taking up that offensively overpriced SSD storage on your Mac? My name is Chris. I'm a software developer who just recently picked up this new Mac. And as someone who embarrassingly has watched countless hours of YouTube recommendation videos for different apps to try, just to end up deleting 95% of them, let me show you in this video the 10 apps that you actually will get a lot of use out of. But before we get to the apps, let me give you a brief overview of how this video is going to be laid out. So I will go through each of the 10 apps individually, give a really quick overview of what makes the app so useful and why I included it in this list. And then I'll also give you a very quick rundown of how to download and set up each app individually. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. App number one is called Alfred, and this is typically the first app that I download and install on any new MacBook because it's essentially the spotlight tool on steroids. Just like the spotlight tool, you can search internally on your computer for files, folders, applications, but the real power with Alfred lies in its ability to allow you to search externally as well. So using Alfred, you could search the web, you could find products on Amazon, you could search for videos on YouTube, you can really search for anything that you could think of outside of your MacBook. To download Alfred, we'll go ahead and open up a new browser window, type in Alfred app and scroll down to the alfredapp.com link. Once here, you can go ahead and click download Alfred to get the installation started. To use it, you can set up a hotkey, which to be honest, I set it up with the same command spacebar hotkey because with Alfred, you'll never end up using the Spotlight tool anymore anyways. Alfred is without a doubt my number one most used tool on my MacBook and just an absolute game changer for productivity. App number two is a quick but extremely useful one called Hand Mirror. Now, if you work fully remotely like I do, you probably spend a good amount of time in Zoom meetings. And before you hop into a Zoom meeting, you obviously wanna make sure through your webcam that you don't look like a hot mess from hell. So instead of opening Alfred, typing in photo booth and waiting for the app to open, you can simply click the little mirror icon in your menu bar to open a preview of your webcam, which opens in under a second. Now to download Hand Mirror, go ahead and hit Command Space Bar or whichever hotkey you have set up to open up Alfred. Type App Store and hit Enter to open up the App Store. Once the App Store is open, go ahead and search for Hand Mirror. Click Download and you will be good to go. Now there is a paid version of the app for $4.99, but to be completely honest, I have zero idea what it does and just recommend going with the free one. If there are any hand mirror developers watching this, please don't find me and have me schwacked. I just can't recommend a paid version of an app that I don't fully understand myself. App number three is another quick but incredibly useful one if you are a multitasker like me. Now, if you are a multitasker, you probably have multiple screens open at the same time. And let's be honest here, Mac's built-in split screen view is absolute garbage. I mean, I tried using it here, as you can see, and you have to hold this green button to split the screen, and then it goes into a full screen. I got stuck here. It's just, it's, it's not user-friendly at all. So the next app is called Rectangle. What makes Rectangle so useful is that it's a powerful little app that allows you to use hotkeys to split up your screen, and it doesn't limit you to just left to right. You can also use hotkeys to split it up top to bottom in the four corners with four different screens. It, it really allows you to divide up your screen in any way that you want to. To download Rectangle, it's really as easy as hitting command space to open up Alfred, typing in Rectangle app to open it in the browser, and downloading it from their website. Once downloaded, you can open the app to see the settings and all of the default hotkeys, which you can customize however you want. Next up is an app called Hidden Me. And what makes this app so powerful is this small little menu icon it gives you up here that allows you to temporarily hide all of the files and folders on your desktop. Now this is perfect for uh, any minimalist out there who just wants a clean looking desktop and to be able to access your files whenever you want. For me, I use it to hide everything on my desktop when I'm doing screen shares during my Zoom meetings for work. Now to download Hidden Me, it's as easy as opening up Alfred, typing in the App Store, searching for Hidden Me, and downloading it that way. Now, the only downside is that this is a paid app. It's $1.99, which, you know, relatively speaking, it's not a lot of money, but it is a paid app. So I understand if you don't wanna buy it. Personally, I think it is 100% worth it, especially with how much use I get out of it. One app you can use to take complete creative control over your menu bar is a popular app called Bartender 4. 
It's the best for decluttering and organizing your menu bar exactly how you want and comes with powerful features you can use to rearrange, hide, or show menu bar icons to suit your preferences, giving you ultimate control over the menu bar. Bartender lets you create custom menus, search for specific menu bar items, and access hidden icons with ease. The only hiccup here is that it is a paid app and costs $14, so if that is a tool that you want to invest in, I highly recommend it. Time out. Quick announcement before moving on to the next app. I want to let you know that I am running a $100 Amazon gift card giveaway for my subscribers. Now, at the time of this recording, I only have about 150 subscribers, so your chances of winning are relatively high, especially compared to these other channels with hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Entering is simple. All you need to do is like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment down below letting me know which of these apps that we're going through today is your favorite or the one you think you'll get the most use out of. So with that being said, let's get on to the next app. App number six is a very underrated one called Tempbox. Now, we've all been in the situation where you're on a website trying to download a free course or guide and you have to put in your email address. The problem with this is that once you put in your email, the owner of the website typically adds you to an email drip campaign and starts bombarding your personal inbox with all of these marketing emails. With Tempbox, this is no longer a problem as it generates a fake email address you can use to get past the signup wall without your personal inbox getting bombarded. You can create one fake email address or you can do it how I do, which is using multiple email addresses to better organize the files that you receive from the signups. Personally, because my name is Chris Tomshack, I use two separate fake email addresses, both starting with ctom- dash. So I have ctom- dash miscellaneous, and then I have ctom- dash newsletters, because typically those are the two folders that I want to use to actually receive the either miscellaneous things that I'm signing up for or newsletters in specific. Now, since Tempbox is a free and open source app, it is not on the App Store, but downloading it is as simple as clicking Command Spacebar or whatever your hotkey set to open up Alfred, typing in Tempbox Wasim to search the web, click on the first link here, tempbox.wasim.works, and this will take you to the company page. And right here, you can go ahead and hit download for Mac. Once Tempbox is downloaded, you can go ahead and use Alfred again to open up the Tempbox app, which will bring up the settings. And as you can see, since this is a new Mac and I just downloaded Tempbox, my inboxes are totally clean, but you can see my two email addresses here, ctomshack-miss and ctomshack-newsletters. If you wanna make more than two, it's very simple. All you have to do is go up here and click new address and then type in whatever you want here and save it to create it. App number seven is a relatively new one to me, but has been an absolute game changer for my productivity, and it is called Drop Zone 4. Now, the most common use case of Drop Zone 4 for me is dragging files up into the menu bar icon here, which also acts as a storage container to hold files if you want to drag and drop multiple files into it before sharing. Once you have the files you want to share inside of Drop Zone, you can easily combine them into a single shareable file that you can drag and drop into a messaging app, Dropbox, or really anywhere that accepts file transfers. Downloading Drop Zone can be done in two different ways. You can either open the App Store and download it directly from there, or you can go straight to the Drop Zone 4 website and download it here. This next app is called Cheat Sheet, and this is one I've been using for years now to really boost my productivity and expedite my workflows. And what Cheat Sheet does is it gives you quick access to keyboard shortcuts for any application that you have open. So using it is really as easy as holding down the command key, which opens the Cheat Sheet menu that shows you all of the available shortcuts for whatever app you have open, saving you a bunch of time and effort. So Cheat Sheet is another free app, but it's not in the App Store. So to download it, we can go ahead and use Alfred again, type in Cheat Sheet app to search the browser, and we will scroll down to this Softonic link here. And once you're on this page, all you have to do is click this free download button, and you will be good to go from there. Okay, app number nine is monitor control, which will be extremely beneficial to you if you use external monitors like I do. And that is because monitor control makes adjusting the brightness of multiple monitors as simple as clicking the drop down button inside of the menu bar and setting the brightness level to your preference. Inside of the app settings, I prefer to show the slider tick marks and percentages, as well as allowing control over the volume of the monitors. 
Now, Monitor Control is free and open source, so it's not available on the App Store, but downloading it is simple, and I will show you how right now. So to download it, go ahead and open Alfred, search Monitor Control App, click the second link, which will take you to the GitHub repo. And from here, there are two ways to download it. You can either use Homebrew to install the app within the terminal, or you can click on releases, scroll down to the .dmg file here and download it this way. And now moving on to the final recommended app, which is called App Cleaner. With App Cleaner, when you go to drag an application to uninstall, it not only removes that app, but it also scans your system for any leftover files and deletes those too. Downloading App Cleaner is really as simple as opening Alfred, typing in App Cleaner Mac to search the web, go into their website here, and when you scroll down, you can select which version of the app you want to download. And with that, from productivity hacking apps like Alfred and Cheat Sheet to quality of life improving apps like Rectangle and Hidden Me, you have my list of the top 10 MacBook applications I believe you will actually use. Now, I did include links to each of the apps in the description below this video. And if you did find this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in the next one.